Today's voiceover talent is more than just a pretty voice. Pretty voice. Pretty voice. Pretty voice. Today's voiceover talent has to be a boss. A boss. A boss. A boss. A boss. Join us each week for business owner strategies and success with your hosts, Ann Ganguza and Gabrielle Nistico, along with some of the strongest voices in our industry. Rock your business. Rock your business. Rock your business. Like a boss. Like a boss. Rock your business like a boss. Rock your business like a boss. A VO, VO boss. boss. A VO boss. A VO, a VO boss. boss. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, with my amazingly wonderful boss bestie, Gabby Nistico. Hey, Gabby. Ciao. Ooh, ciao. <laughs> ciao, Bella. <laughs> so, Gabby, I was on Facebook the other day and happened to notice a post that was asking about how to write a contract or what should I include in my contract for my mm-hmm, client? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, bam, yeah. I thought, wow, this would be an amazing topic to talk about. Oh, yeah. And I think there there's so many different aspects of it, too. People are intimidated by contracts, afraid of contracts, don't know what to do for a contract, don't know where to get contracts. It's, it's a whole thing. It is. <laughs> I think it's important to understand, I guess, in our industry, what's important to include In a contract. And can you write one yourself? Is that a thing? Any decent contract, I think, originates from a legal attorney. That's its beginning. You really want to have that initial structure set up by someone who knows and understands contract legalities. But they can be modified after the fact, and then they can be kind of evolved. The contract that I use for all of my imaging and TV promo work is like that. It was created many, many years ago by an attorney that the casting company I worked for hired, and I was given permission to use it. But, you know, it like I said, it started with someone who really knows what the heck they're doing in that world. So let me ask you, Gabby, because I think we should differentiate because you have an actual like document, correct, that you send for all of your clients to sign? Or is this just for your radio imaging clients no. and TV promo? So in my world, um, anything that's on retainer should have mm-hmm. a contract. And absolutely, that could be a commercial client. And in the past, I have had commercial clients on retainer. I've also had uh, corporate clients on retainer. But whenever there's a retainer and there's an agreed upon amount of work for a consistent agreed upon amount of money, then yeah, there has to be a contract in place. I'll take the contract that I have for imaging and promo and and modify it depending on whatever that need is. Also, Gabby, I think it's important for our listeners to understand there is a contract that you can draw up or there's a contract that you sign that your client draws up. Yes. I've had both. I have two. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, the reason I'm laughing is because in in many, many, many instances, a client is going to present you with a contract. But right. my feeling on it is if you don't have a counter contract of your own or um, just a decent knowledge of contracts, then you really don't want the client being the one to originate it. Well, now that's very interesting because I've had, for my corporate contracts, I've had companies that originated with me and I will not get the work unless I sign it. However, I will say that every contract that, and this is important, I think, for you guys to to listen to, every contract that you are presented with, you have an opportunity, right, to mark up that contract and to negate points on that contract that you may or may not agree with. Don't just sign a contract blindly, for goodness sake. Please, God, don't do that. I think it's your responsibility as a good business person to absolutely review all points of the contract, and where you don't agree with those points of contract, you can mark that up and submit that back to your client for review. Literally, all you have to do is put a line through the thing you don't like, an initial. Exactly. And your initials yep. next to it, and then you resubmit it. I'm always going to assume that if the client is handing me the contract, that the contract is not written in my best interest, that it's mm-hmm. written in their yeah. best interest. Of course. Hence, therefore, if you write the contract, <laughs> you're you're at an advantage there, right? Because you are stating exactly what it is that you want from the client or are going to provide the client. Now, I've had an instance where 
I've had a contract that was sent to me by a company, and it was a long-term contract, right, where I was getting a, a substantial amount of work for a substantial length of time. I then looked at the contract, marked up those areas which I didn't agree with, and put my initials there. And you can sign that to see if your client will accept it. And then there is also something that I have sent to my clients after that takes place is a statement of work contract, a SOW, S-O-W, statement of work, which you have to sign. It's something that you provide to the client if that you're, you're expecting work from them, or they might send to you and have you sign as well. Yep. I've also had cases where I've submitted my contract to a corporate client, um, typically one of the big radio conglomerates, and then they acknowledge my contract, but they attach their contract as an addendum. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So it's, and then we just addendum everything. Right. So it's a contract <laughs> merging with another contract. Which then and, gets responded to with yet another maybe right. addendum. There's always... And they make a baby yeah. called an NDA, but yeah... yeah. That's true. There are, there's like addendums and there's A, B, C, addendum, yeah. you know, whatever oh, they want to call it. At the bare minimum, I just want to say a contract can be as simple as an email. And an email that states those important things, and I know, Gabby, you and I went through this in our negotiation class. What are the important points that we need to um, spec out for a voiceover job? You've got to outline the work that you're willing to do versus the work you're not willing to do and what would cost additional money above and beyond the contract. Revisions, yeah. Yeah, you, you've got usage. to outline usage. You have to outline turnaround time. What happens when the contract expires? Does it Payment auto terms. renew? What are, the, what are the renewals if they want to keep going and continue to use you? My Length. big thing is to... Be on the lookout for the word perpetuity because that's a bad word. Like, I know. That's like the evil oof, word yeah. in, in our industry Blech. is perpetuity. So, you know, I've started to, for every quote that I give, it turns into a contract, really, a quote. Mm turns into a contract for me because if they accept my quote, they've accepted my terms. So within my quote, I will have all of the items that we just talked about. Obviously, it should be the name of the project, right, for the name of the company in so many dollars. I actually have now been specifying U.S. dollars. I specify the length of time for up to so much finished audio or length of project. It will also include revisions. I usually have my price include a certain amount of revisions mm -hmm. and also the usage where it can be used yep. and how long it can be used. Always now, it's no longer a simple email without the <laughs> length of the term. Yeah. Because of that nasty evil <laughs> in perpetuity phrase, it has now become something that I add on. This is good for internal use only or, or web use for one year, whatever it's going to be. The length of it is absolutely added on. And that's the bare minimum contract that I propose to my client. And so therefore, I'm the one writing the contract, right? That everything is under my my guidelines. Mm -hmm. And the the client can choose to accept that or not. And that thus begins, thus begins a negotiation process after that. So I've initiated the process with a contract that I've written. I love that you just said thus. <laughs> I mean, I love everything else you're saying too, but the fact that you use the word thus. Thus. So, so. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. Okay. Thusly. <laughs> I started to talk legal. I tried. You know? <laughs> Therefore, I, comma. <laughs> uh, I think everything you said, they're, they're definites in that process. Also, guys, please make sure that you get a signed, executed copy. Yes. And what that means is after you've signed the contract and submitted it back to your client, they sign it and then send you the copy with everyone's signature because that's the document ultimately that you need for it to legally hold up. Absolutely. If you don't have proof of their signature or they don't have proof of your signature, then technically that contract didn't happen. Gabby, does yours get attached to every a quote or should I say if, you, if you're providing a quote or if you're providing the contract, is it called the terms of service? What do you call it? Is there a specific name that you're, you're calling it? Um, the contract itself? Yeah. For me, it's just a retainer contract because that's the only okay. time I really use them. Gabby and I have already talked about a couple of different types of contracts. The one that I just kind of specced out was an email. Due to the, the guidelines on the email, that became a contract for me. I did not necessarily have a document that I attached and made the client sign. So 
there is that when the client accepts and pays you for the job, they have accepted your contract. Um, and the email is a legal binding document. Yeah, I technically view all of my invoices as a contract. Yes. And I get yes. really specific about laying out the exact nature of the job and its usage and what mm -hmm. it's for. And all those details go right in there. So even oh, if that's it's a great point. Yeah, yeah, something as simple as like a local radio commercial, it's still outlined and documented. And yes, oh, yeah. the client acknowledges it via payment. My email, my initial email that I was talking about, right, where we're specking out our, our terms, that does get cut and paste right into the invoice. And so mm -hmm. that, again, becomes a, a binding document. Now, there are actual documents, right, that you can create, which I, I know I have I have a uh, an actual contract, right, that's like a PDF that I'll attach and say, please sign and return. And then I sign it as well. Both parties have to sign it to mm -hmm. make that legally binding, yeah. if that is the case, right? If you have a document that you're sending out to get signed, both mm -hmm. parties must sign that, and you must have a copy of that. A lot of people in voiceover, too, I think, get really concerned about, like, where, how do I even get a contract? Where do I begin with this? I'm surprised by how many people don't know it. You can go to, like, Staples or Office Max or Office mm -hmm. Depot or whatever, and you can actually buy generic pre-made contracts. Mm -hmm. They used to be physical, like they were actual drawn up contracts with carbon copies, you know, mm -hmm. behind them. And you can find now them. Now they're for, electronic. <laughs> yeah. And you can find them for all sorts of things. Um, there are all kinds of different contract templates that you can then take and modify because ultimately, yes, the language in the contract is port is important, but it's that signature that matters. Anything oh, yeah. is Absolutely. a contract once two people have signed it. Agreed. Agreed. A marriage certificate is technically mm -hmm. a contract. You know, mm -hmm. it's yeah. same thing. Yeah. And, you know, there's sources, too, for, for other countries. Like, if you want to talk about specifics in terms of our industry, there are people that sell uh, templates for that. And, you know, I, I happen to know that, that a good friend of mine that I'm going to be talking to right now actually has a template in a book that she sells. <laughs> well, yeah. my my So my radio imaging book has a contract, the same contract I've been talking about in this episode, I've made it readily available inside the book for people to take, modify, copy, and use for their own purposes. Rob Skiglin Paglia, too. Yep. Rob Skiglin Paglia has, has a, a series of templates as well in his book. Yeah, and it's uh, via legal. But I mean, there's also other services where, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a voiceover contract that you're starting right. with. You just have exactly. to know the terms and clauses that you need to identify. Right. You need to know what's important, right? What are the mm -hmm. terms of the job? And we've pretty much outlined them. It's important. Name of the company, right? Um, the dollar amount, the revision policy, the payment terms, as what well as the payment thing? policy, right? Like yeah. how yes. you're going to get paid or in what time frame. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Time frame for the job, uh, the usage, all that good stuff needs to be a part of that contract. Gabby, let's talk a little bit about, um, you mentioned before, NDAs. Mm -hmm. I sign those like on a daily basis, <sighs> practically. <laughs> like, yeah. A lot of times I'll get that from my agent if I'm doing an audition. <laughs> There's a really great tool that you can add into your web browser called DocuSign. And DocuSign allows you to take a document. You can you can literally digitally enter your signature. So anytime you get an NDA or a contract for a job, you can open it in DocuSign and Sign. literally like copy and paste yeah. your information into it at the signing point, resave it digitally, and just send it back off to wherever it's got to go. And it and saves you guys. so yeah, much that's, time. It used to be like such a headache. I would get a contract. I'd be like, oh my God, no. Now what? I have to like print it and then I've got to sign it and then I've got to somehow scan, scan it. it. Remember it was scanning oh, it and then God. it's like, ew. Um, Come on. Are you I still love when people are like, do you have a fax machine? No. Oh my God. No. no. I don't even have no. a phone line. How, How the shit would I have a why? fax machine? But you know, there are companies. There are companies <laughs> that... I will tell you the only good reason you can have for a fax is that theoretically it's secure. When you transmit data because it's, you know, going over the wire is, you know, binary information. Um, it's probably one of the more secure methods of 
uh, of getting something over to another location. Hmm. So that's really good the, to know. The, some besides the DocuSign, if you have the Adobe Suite yes. of products, there's Adobe. I think they call it Echo. They they've revised the name a couple of times, but that's what I use because I have the Adobe Suite. They always seem to make it so complex. Like well. <laughs> I mean, but, there's apps now, too, the scanner apps. I mean, there yeah. there are a lot of ways to make the process of having to sign contracts just a little bit less of a headache. Yeah, I mean, we're at a point where NDAs are a daily or multiple time yeah. per day part of a lot of voice actors' life. Because the information is sensitive and it's only meant for, you know, a, a certain segment of people. And so back in the day when I worked in the corporate world, that was a process. Like you, you joined a company and you signed. You signed the contract, the NDA, basically that said you will not disclose company information. Otherwise, you are you will be liable. Oh, yeah. NDAs, non-competes, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You brought it up. You said it. Sensitive information, right? Yeah. But here's the irony, right? Everything is now sensitive information. Everything, no it's matter true. where it comes from. And we're almost at this place where it's like if everything is sensitive, then really nothing is sensitive. But that's <laughs> yeah, not yeah. how our clients are going to view it. Exactly. exactly. So I get NDAs for specific jobs, right? Like I can't even audition for a job until I sign and sign. acknowledge yes. the NDA. Exactly. But I've already signed a blanket NDA with the agent or casting company that's sending me the audition. So it's like double NDAs. It's, it's yeah, double. <laughs> it's redundancy. Double it's like double agent. It's like it double It is. NDA. It's crazy. <laughs> that is kind of silly because, right, you do, sign a, you do sign an agreement. There are some agents that do not require you to sign well, contracts. Okay, days. well, I have an opinion right? about that, but I'll keep it to yeah. myself. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 an interesting development. The client's worst fear is that the content is going to be released prematurely mm -hmm. before they had creative control of the release. Exactly. You know, everybody, I think, gets a little confused because they think that it's like, you know, I can't share this script because it's like gold. No, that's not it. That's not why they're doing it. No. It's simply that they don't want their commercial, their product, their thing to be rolled out or introduced to the public in a way that they didn't have control of. Control over. And yeah. gosh, Gabby, don't we know about that? <laughs> As entrepreneurs, when you are working on your products, your website, it's just, it's that you want to have the control as to when that product comes out. And if somebody leaks the information prior to that, it can screw up your whole marketing strategy. Oh, God, yes. And that's really the basis of our podcast, is it not? Business and marketing. you got to understand it from their point of view. It's business courtesy. If you've been hired to do a job and you've signed an NDA, and shit, even if you haven't signed the NDA, don't be a dumbass. <laughs> don't, don't, Please, God, do not. Don't be a, be a dumbass. dumbass. First of all, until you've been paid for the job, shut your damn mouth. Don't talk Wait, about it. But, Gabby, even if you have been paid for the job, oh, hold on. I'm not you done. still. I'm not done. That's only part oh, okay. one. That's okay. only part one. Until you've been paid for it, shut your mouth. Don't talk about it. <laughs> Number two, you have to know with absolute 1,000% certainty that the job, the thing that you voiced, is already out in the public world. Yes, it's out absolutely, there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then you can grab Ask it, permission. pull it from YouTube, yeah, cross reference it, throw it up yeah. on social media, whatever. Because again, it's it's out in the stratosphere already. I think it's nice to ask permission. It is. And I was going to say, and that's the third thing. The third thing is you have to at least have confirmation from someone somewhere in the chain of the job that they're like, yeah, okay, like after the fact, no big. But there are some companies, um, oh, particular one in Florida has something to do with a mouse. Uh, <laughs> you can't Gee, talk about it ever, yeah. ever, ever. Yeah, ever. If you work for Disney in any capacity as a voice actor, you're like you're you're done. You can't yeah. talk about it. Yes, you've you've worked for us, but you can't ever publicly acknowledge it. Can I, is this a little side? Like I know, no. please God, social media. <laughs> well, could you just stop with the? I can't tell you about yeah. this now, oh, God. but. 
exciting things, Ugh. but I can't talk about it. I, I think it's getting overplayed. It is. <laughs> it's weird. It's it's like dangling the carrot that you can never, ever eat. You're right, but it's dangling a carrot nobody wants. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. You're not teasing right. me. Like, I don't care. I'm like, good for you. You booked some Great. I, but I don't care. Like, at that point, it looks like you're just seeking a congratulatory pat on the back. We have to consider. Again, our industry, it's a lonely one. So, <laughs> so lonely. So lonely. That our social media tends to be our water cooler. But you've got to be so careful when it comes to client information. There are some people out there that almost never, ever talk about the work that they're doing. Or maybe they're not working, but they certainly haven't put themselves in a position where they're going to get sued. Gosh, mm -hmm. I've known talents that have actually lost the job because they yes. spoke about it on social media. Yep. If you've done something that's really high profile and that is going to get a lot of attention, don't you think that one of your voice actor friends is going to kind of, in a sense, promote it for you? Yeah. When I hear somebody I know or I recognize on some whatever it might be, I'll go to Facebook, go to Instagram and go, hey, I just heard my friend blah, blah, blah. Yes. Or I just saw um, yeah, such exactly. and such, even if that friend can't acknowledge the job, they're not allowed to talk about it. Well, nobody said we can't talk about it for them. Well, exactly. You're not yeah, violating anything. You can't stop right? that. You're not violating anything. I do that to Tasia Valenza all mm -hmm. the time. She was heavily involved with um, Star Trek Discovery, and yep. she was yep. not allowed to talk about it at all. But that doesn't mean that Gabby can't. The minute the show aired, <laughs> I was like, yep. Tasia! <laughs> Well, exactly. And yeah. so what better way to promote yourself than to have somebody promote you? Somebody else. Just don't take a chance, guys. It's mm -mm. just, it's too risky. And in terms of contracts, there's all sorts of great contracts out there. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. You have, you can have as much control as you want over every single contract, whether you create it, where you have the most control, or whether somebody creates it and they want you to sign it, you still have control. I have yet to have somebody send back a change that I've drawn up on a contract because I'm not asking outrageous things either. Usually money has already been discussed and agreed upon either verbally or through an email. And then the contract comes to, to kind of just wrap that all up in a pretty bow. You said it. It's often, it's not money that's being negotiated. Yeah. It's other terms. Other terms. It's usage. It's yeah, length of exactly. use. Those are the negotiable factors. Right. No client, no agent, no casting person is ever going to fault you for saying, hey, I got the contract, and I have some questions. Do you have a minute to go over it with me? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, that's smart. As a matter of fact, that's just showing smart business savvy. Make you look People, better if you ask questions. <laughs> I, I right? think so, right? right? The fact yeah. that you took the time to read the contract in the first place, right? No kidding. Yeah. Here's looking at you, Apple, with your 17 freaking thousand page update notification, blah, 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 <laughs> that we all just get to the end and hit agree. Wow. We could probably host another episode on this. <laughs> I'm sure we will. I'd like to give a great shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can record and sound like a boss. You've got to head over to VOBoss.com. All kinds of great stuff is up there. If you don't get a chance to listen, go to our show note page. So for every episode, we do have a page that has show notes, takeaways, references, and links. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your hosts, Ann Ganguza and Gabby Nistico. All rights reserved. Ann Ganguza voice talent in association with 3Moon Media. Redistribution with permission. Coast-to-coast -coast connectivity via IPDTL.